Okay. Now, today, my talk is going to be how to prepare this civil service examination or IAS examination. Now, once you have heard about me that I'm going to talk on this issue, or even before that, when I was working in Jargram, my most memorable moments, my first posting was Jargram. So I always love Jargram and people of Jargram. So you would have all thought that I should have been very intelligent. I should have been very good in my 10th, 12th college. I should have been a gold medalist. So all these thoughts you would have had. But today, let me open up. I wanted to be a doctor when I was, I was not having IAs in mind during my school days. My 10th standard, when I marks were low, then I thought 11th and 12th, I'll somehow work hard and get into IAS. So again, 12th standard, I wrote, the day of the results, marks were not that good, which will get me a medical seat. It was a dream, not only for me, even for my parents. So my mother started crying. And my father is a very, very positive man. So he was also internally worried because my marks were less. Kintu, what he told is, see, don't worry. If not doctor, why can't you become IAS officer? Who can become control all doctors? Everyone will be under you. So at that time, he told just to console me, console my mother. Then he also forgot. I also forgot. Life went on, joined engineering, a private engineering college, not IIT or premium colleges and all. From a private engineering college, I did one mechanical engineering. Once I went to college, uh, my education was, my, my marks went low. People who have seen me in Jargram will remember, I'm, not, I'm a good person also, but a bad person also. I'm like a rowdy going here and there. All that rowdyism started when I was in college. So college time, I wasted my time. I had arrear. Arrear means I failed in few subjects also. After that, once the college got over, I was without job for one and a half years. In almost for one and a half years, I was running around for a job. I couldn't get any job. Then I went for one Ambatur estate, one small company. Ambatur is a place in Chennai, one small company. That, that company also rejected me, telling you don't have the technical knowledge. So after one and a half years, finally, one miracle happened for me. One college, one small college in Chennai, engineering college, they told, okay, we can accept you, provided you do not only teaching, but you should also do lab job, means lab assistant work. So I thought, okay, and my monthly salary, you know, what was that? 2,750 per month. So with 2,750 per month as a lecturer, come lab in charge, I started my life. Life was very difficult because many of my college mates used to get 10 times of my salary. Many went abroad to USA. But I was, because I didn't do my engineering properly, I was just every day, almost three years, I used to go almost one hour journey from Chennai, it's outskirts of Chennai, just for getting 2,750 per month. At that time, the social recognition, today, all of you know, R.A. Israel Javasing, that day no one knew because I was an ordinary person. So I wanted to come up in life. So then that day when 12th standard result, Amar Baba Bole Chenna, what, and that I came, that came to my mind. Why not IAS? So wrote this civil service examination. When I started writing, everyone, including my relatives, except my parents, all others told, no, 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 this exam, don't write. This exam is meant for the intelligent persons. Only the gold medalist can clear this civil service examination. So don't waste your time. However, I thought, why can't we write? Okay, what, nothing wrong in trying. That's what my parents also told. So I thought, okay, at least let us try. Wrote the civil service examination. And to my surprise, everyone's surprise, I got All India 294 rank and got into Indian Railway Traffic Service. And I was posted in Assam. I do not know some relation with Eastern 
uh, area first my uh, railway job was in assam then again i wrote and got all india 59th rank and got our precious west bengal so i was thinking always how people like me could clear this civil service examination because i was not great intelligent during my school or college when i went to masuri masuri is the place where they train the ias ips ifs irs all officers are trained in lal bahadur shastri national academy of administration in masuri when i went there 80% of the officers who got training with me they were not from iits they were not from aims very few were there but 80% were very very average students like me they were from government schools government college very humble background they were not gold medalists so i was always thinking how people like me could clear this ias examination when everyone who th- thinks that this exam is very very tough exam on earth so this thinking was always back of my mind sab samay i was always thinking how people like us could clear this exam 80% so during bharat darshan as part of ias training we are taken on bharat darshan bharat darshan is one where across india will move around from kashmir to kanyakumari once that bharat darshan got over then the as part of bharat darshan we will be meeting the prime minister president so prime minister will host us breakfast or lunch so we went to seven race course road at that time dr manmohan singh was the prime minister so he gave us a big speech the next day was the presidential visit rashtrapati bhavan visit and we were very fortunate at that time the rashtrapati was dr abdul kalam so during the he gave a very lengthy speech two hour speech once the speech got over one of my friend who's also an ias officer he asked him sir i want to be a successful ias officer can you give me some tips so then dr kalam told see forget about ias anything you want to be successful follow two mantras and those two mantras if you follow you will be successful and he told where he got those mantras how he got those mantras so dr abdul kalam was a humble he was telling that he was from a very humble background economically he play stayed in a place called uh, uh, he was born in a place called uh, ramna district and it's a very in a island called rameshram so at that time he used to go to school and every day morning he used to distribute newspapers so that he can get some money with that money he can support the family some money small money of course his parents were also his father was also earning but money was less so he used to do this and evenings he used to go and sit in seashore rameshwaram is a island so there he used to see the birds flying so gradually one interest interest started in him i should also fly one day i should fly but once he gradually the schooling once he became 9th standard 10th standard he realized no we cannot humans cannot fly we can only become a pilot maybe if you want to fly so he then he started dreaming i should join indian air force and join as a pilot then after that <coughs> he completed his 12th standard then because his dream was to become a pilot so he joined aeronautical engineering once he completed his aeronautical engineering immediately he applied for the indian air force pilot job because that was the dream which he was living from childhood so they they called for an interview for you know, to a place called dehradun so dehradun many of you will know but those who do not know it is somewhere around 4 or 5 hours from delhi it's the foothill of himalayas he joined he went for a four day interview process and once the interview got over then they finally told now within half an hour we'll put the success list so eight candidates will be in the success so he was eagerly waiting so dr kalam told us see i was sweating a lot because that was the day i was waiting for all these years so internally so much tremor inside me <coughs> and finally they pasted the success list so dr kalam went he saw the first name whether there is abdul kalam no second abdul kalam no third fourth fifth sixth seventh and eighth also no kalam 
So Kalam told, I started crying. I thought as if the walls are falling on me. Because this entire life, all these years, I was living for this day. But finally, Indian Air Force rejected me. So I didn't know what to do. So he started, he took a bus towards Delhi without knowing what to do. With the tears. Somewhere in a place called Rishikesh. Many people were getting down. So he thought, why can't I also get down? What am I going to go, go do in Delhi? Let me also roam. So he got down in Delhi, uh, Rishikesh without any purpose. After some time, when he found many people going to an ashram. So he told, why can't I also go? There was one Shivananda Gurukulam. Then he thought, see, I am a Muslim. Whether a Hindu ashram will accept me. Then he thought, no, no, no problem. If they reject, already Indian Air Force has rejected let uh, Swamiji also reject. So he went inside. Swami Shivananda asked him, so what is your name? So he told, my name is Abdul Kalam. So he told, welcome Mr. Kalam. And he asked him to sit. So Dr. Kalam went inside. At that time, of course, he was not doctor. So Kalam went inside and he was seated along with them, others. Then Swamiji gave a sermon for one hour. Once a sermon got over, when others were leaving, he called Abdul Kalam, please come. So he, Abdul Kalam went there. He told, see, you are worried. I think you have lost something big in your life. I can read from your eyes. Don't worry. Your destiny is different. However, from today, I'll give you two mantras. If you want to be successful, you have to follow these two mantras. <coughs> First thing is, whenever you want to do something in life, think, as if nothing else is there in life. As if that is the only thing, only purpose in your life. And second thing, if Abdul Kalam does, <coughs> he should be different from others. If Abdul Kalam does, that work should be different from others. He should not be like others. Then Abdul Kalam told, yes, I felt so happy. Something of new energy came inside me because I was with so much worry. But Swamiji told, my destiny is different. Then I came to Delhi. Then you know his story. He joined DRDO, ISRO. And you see, throughout his life, he was different from others. He was completely dedicated for his job. And somewhere in 2002, when they wanted a president who's not from any political party, Abdul Kalam was the choice. He became the Rashtrapati. In 2005, one year before I reached you people, I think 2006, I reached Jargram. So 2005, when, in, when he was talking to us, he told, in case if I had cleared that Air Force, I'll be one officer. But today, I am the Rashtrapati, the Army Chief, Navy Chief, Air Force Chief. They all come and salute. And that is because of those two mantras. And he told, in case if I have not become a president, if I become just a sweeper in this Rashtrapati Bhavan, still I would have followed those two mantras. I would have sweeped it so nicely, added some flower pots, so that everyone will think, hey, Kalam, that sweeper has cleaned. That is why flower pots are there. So when he was telling this, I realized why people like me could clear this civil service examination. The reason is very simple. Without knowing these two mantras, I was following and that is the reason I could clear this civil service exam or IAS exam, which is the toughest exam. I was really desperate. I was really having nothing else in life. I was just getting 2,750 per month when most of my batchmates were getting 10 times or 20 times more than. I used to feel shy when I used to go to some marriage ceremonies, relatives, because they'll ask what your son is doing. No answer, just getting 2,750. So I was desperate. I wanted to get into civil service. Nothing else was there in life at that point of time. And the second thing, yes, one good thing I did is, instead of be like a cowherd, I started going and asking people who cleared the civil service exam. When I went and heard for what I heard from them, that was totally different from what we hear from others. So the path for me was very easy. So when they told, this is how you have to study, path became easy. And that is why I could clear this civil service exam. Now, I, I will say how you can use these two mantras for clearing the civil service exam. Now, since many of you are 
freshers some of you are from different colleges schools everyone so i thought let me tell the basics first who can write this exam first of all you need a degree what is the minimum age to appear for this exam first of all you should know that we even though we call it as an ias exam this exam is the entry for 24 top services of our country ias ips ifs irs irts like the 24 services are waiting for you if you clear this exam then according to your rank yes you can get into any of these services <coughs> so this is called as the civil service exam conducted by the union public service commission or upsc what is the minimum age minimum age is 21 years maximum age varies from community to community if you belong to general community then 32 years obc 35 years scheduled caste scheduled tribe 37 years how many times you can write this exam If you are a general category, six times you can take up this exam. Six attempts are given. OBC nine attempts. Scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, any number of attempts between the age of twenty-one and thirty-seven. Now, a degree is required. Now, either a degree percentage, how much percentage you have to get to get appear for this exam. Now, many of us think that it should be ninety percent, ninety-five percent. No, UPSC says a pass in a degree is enough. and even if you have not gone to a college if you have done only through a correspondence course upsc says no problem we will check you you don't need to worry about your college even if you have not gone to a college just because of some economic reason you have done through correspondence course still you are eligible to write this civil service exam i have many of my students in officers ais academy who have cleared now they have done through correspondence course also so uh, just a degree is enough okay what are the stages to clear this exam there are three stages the first is called the preliminary exam pratham first okay second is mains examination and the third is the interview the prelims exam is normally held every year in the month of june so june first week normally they hold there will be two exams on that day it will be held on a sunday it will be only objective type paper the first paper is called as general studies and the second paper is called as aptitude now this aptitude you forget because it is simple paper and it is just a qualifying paper okay out of 200 you have to get just 66 even today if i give you the paper you will be comfortably getting 80 marks 90 marks so forget it the first paper is very very important the first paper is nothing but the general studies what they ask history geography economy environment now all these things are school books in your school you would have studied the same thing only they ask now how to study that say if i ask you when was salt satyagraha what will be your answer someone will say sir 1920 someone will may say 1930 someone may say and many physics students so definitely i cannot expect from you people also some may say 1940 as long as you say within 1947 i'll say okay no problem because 1947 we got freedom so definitely it should have been before that in civil service exam they won't ask when was salt satyagraha okay so don't worry so actually it was in 1930 but they won't ask like that they'll check you should I, as i told you the second mantra see first mantra is you should work hard there is no second thought on it you should study hard work hard then only you will be able to clear this exam but the second mantra you should be different from others what others how they will prepare they will prepare oh 1930 salt satyagraha okay 1942 quit india movement upsc doesn't ask like that you should understand why in 1930 there was a salt satyagraha if you start thinking like this you will start exploring more and more you will understand that there was one boy called mohandas karamchand gandhi born in porbandar in gujarat in 1869 after <coughs> his completing his school today what is the passion among most of you is we should become a doctor we should become engineer that day those days it was lawyer so this mohandas karamchand gandhi went to england studied law once he completed his law he came back 
and he his brother only supported him so his brother told are why can't you go to bombay because bombay high court was a prominent court at that time so you should go to bombay so uh, mohandas karamchand gandhi he went to bombay took a small room little far away from the court every day he used to wear his black color coat and go to the court and in the court he, he never got a case just he used to observe from outside what all happening days passed months passed first month second month third month fourth month sixth month fifth month sixth month not even a single case he got then he got frustrated disappointed then he wrote a letter to his brother my dear brother i am wasting your money you are sending me pocket money but i am wasting here i have not got a single case it is better i come back to gujarat at least i'll help you in your business then his brother wrote back no 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 you don't come you have studied law use it you carry this letter to my friend my friend has some case you go and meet him he'll give you a case so mohandas karamchand gandhi he was not father of nation of at that time he was so excited he rushed to his friend's place his brother's friend his brother's friend saw him hey you are you are looking young can you fight the case he told sir i am london educated oh london educated okay okay this is the case okay how much you want the fees so gandhi ji was shy he didn't know how much to ask he told okay 30 rupees so oh, 30 okay he gave gandhi ji was so happy took that money put it in his pocket went to this room study day and night day and night okay for 3 4 days about that case he was thorough the day of hearing came when he went to the court that the other lawyer the defense uh, the prosecution lawyer he was talking gandhi ji was observing silently and once his turn came the judge told yes mohandas karamchand gandhi it is your turn so he went went to the center first time after 6 months now he is coming to the center all these years he was observing from side but now center suddenly he started shivering his legs were shivering he couldn't talk a single word his brother's friend was seeing are what this fellow is not talking anything he was also seated there so he was thinking what has happened so then gandhi ji started my lord then nothing was coming out he forgot total everything he forgot he had a stage fear then after few minutes all were seeing what he is going to tell he told my lord again nothing was coming out except my lord then the judge told yes your lordship is here please continue then gandhi ji finally told my lord the man after few years when he told do or die the entire india was shaking in 1942 the same man was shivering in front of a court few years before finally what he did you know he took the money that 30 rupees from his pocket ran to his brother's friend gave it to him and told please find a better lawyer i am a failed lawyer he left the court if you study freedom struggle after that he never visited court gandhi ji was having that most acute stage fear when then he left went to his room picked up his luggage rushed back to gujarat his brother saw him. what happened why you are here he told no 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 i am not a good lawyer i am a failed lawyer i'll assist you in business then his brother told okay let months go few months went finally his brother again told see you study legal law why can't there is one opening in south africa do you want to go he told no 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 lawyer job i won't like i won't be suitable his brother told no 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 one of my friend told that it is not that you don't need to argue and all only paperwork oh paperwork means i am excellent i have studied in england so he took a shift to south, south africa went there then he started his work there the truth the mahatma in him woke up when he saw the injustice done to the blacks the mahatma in him woke up then he realized no this is not our life then he started the new tool called satyagraha then after that yes gandhi ji started becoming prominent because now he is no longer that shy gandhi ji now he is a mahatma inside he has read so many books after that if you see his life yes throughout he has he was great uh, doing lot of freedom struggles uh, in uh, against the white people in south africa finally 1915 he thought 
yes our motherland is also not is an, is also not free britishers are exploiting there let me go there so he came to india after that he toured our country finally in 1917 in a place called champaran in bihar bihar is kache kache west uh, bengal ke kache ache so bihar a ek place ache eta um, champaran he launched the first satyagraha movement there so the first britishers were taken back because satyagraha you cannot fight back when someone fights then britishers can do that lati charge but someone is doing satyagraha without fighting then what to do so britishers were taken aback then he started becoming famous champaran bardoli like that many places he did and finally he became the indian national congress leader in 1919 when they wanted to launch a big movement in india called non cooperation movement both hindu or muslim very friendly okay so that was a very nice movement so because of gandhi ji so then gandhi ji told yes it should be a satyagraha the movement became a big success in india but however after when it was going in the peak somewhere in 1922 what happened yes there was a one in a place called in the place uttar pradesh in a place called chauri chaura some policemen were taken inside logged and burnt by the uh, freedom fighters the news went to gandhi ji gandhi ji told no this is not satyagraha 22 people have been killed i immediately let us um, stop this his close congress people told no one incident we should not stop the entire movement he told no i am guilty and after that it was stopped next 8 years he was away he was trying to purify himself thinking i am responsible for those 22 deaths finally in 1929 and one young man nehru jawarlal nehru now he became the president of congress and he hoisted our tricolor flag in the banks of river ravi in lahur at that time the congress session was held there once he launched young blood always boils so he told till that point of time all were fighting for swaraj autonomy he told purna swaraj here after complete independence and he declared january 26 as independence day from 1930 and that is why even today when when britishers left on august 15th we couldn't decide the independence day finally when the constitution was ready it was ready in november 26 1949 but however they waited till january 26 so that it becomes a republic day to remember that day so now gandhi ji so finally nehru rajender prasad all went to told gandhi ji gandhi ji you are silent for long time to launch a movement so gandhi ji told yes i can launch a movement okay what should be the movement then gandhi ji told i will launch salt satyagraha oh all were taken aback nehru rajender prasad vallabhai patel because salt tax was very very less people will not fight we should launch farmer struggle or some other struggle but gandhi ji told no if you want me to lead it then it should be salt satyagraha then they told this old man will not uh, listen to us any of is important let him decide okay we support you finally yes that news came out in newspaper next day the lord irwin who was the viceroy read it he started laughing wrote a letter to the then british prime minister see i cannot control my laughter because gandhi ji it seems is going to launch salt satyagraha salt taxes peanut people will not participate nothing to worry i will have peaceful sleep this letter went from him the day of uh, satyagraha in 1930 salt satyagraha gandhi ji started walking from his sabarmati ashram that is in amdavad from there he had to walk for next to 21 22 days till dandi a sea coast to break the salt law when he started walking with just 78 people all thought it is going to be a failure but after one day people started thinking why this old man is walking no salt are we are also using salt whether you are a hindu muslim christian sikh parsi all are using salt whether you are a <laughs> educated person whether you are a lawyer doctor engineer whether you are a teacher If, whether you are not educated everyone uses that whether you are north indian south indian northeast west everyone uses salt people started walking along with him 
gradually that crowd became into kilometers and kilometers and kilometers as he walked people from across india in south india western part everywhere people started breaking the law lord uh, our viceroy uh, lord uh, irwin who told i cannot stop laughing was shaken he what is happening the entire country is agitating finally gandhi ji was arrested now why i am telling all this is it is not required for you to remember when was salt satyagraha why was salt satyagraha that is how you have to study you should not prepare like others remember that second mantra you should be different from others so the preliminary exam is just your school books objective type paper 100 questions they will ask each question two marks so out of 200 the prelims exam is conducted if you think it is very tough you will be hearing everywhere it is very tough very tough no my dear friends if you work hard yes it will be very tough if you don't work hard if you work hard and prepare with understanding rather than just memorizing yes you can comfortably clear now you uh, if i out of this there is a prescribed syllabus your school books are enough to clear the prelims and of course every day you have to listen to all india radio news your newspaper is a must okay so you can read the hindu newspaper it's a very good newspaper it is more or less tuned to our civil service exam the information is so hindu newspaper is good means current affairs all india radio news hindu newspaper in addition you should also study the you should also um you should also study the school books school books are enough ncert books now ncert means cbse students study that books now you may ask sir i didn't study cbse i am state board only can i clear this exam i also didn't study cbse school i studied in state board only okay so don't have that excuse you any now you at school, college level if you are able to read school books it is easy school children are reading those books so it will be much easy for you and to clear the preliminary exam how much marks you have to get see for doctor to get into a doctor you need 99 to uh, yeah, uh, iit and all 99 98 how much do you think to clear the so called toughest ias exam to clear the prelims 50% is more than enough last year the cut off out of 200 was 98 marks out of 200 means 49% i am talking about general category so general obc ss tier little less only so if out of 200 if you are getting around 100 marks or 105 marks comfortably you will clear the preliminary exam but you have to work hard the second stage so preliminary exam is held in june and normally but this year because of corona they have postponed it postponed it to october 4th normally held in june prelims result will come in july middle once the results are out yes september october the mains exam will be there so the mains exam now whatever you studied in prelims history geography economy environment current news those things now you have to write it preliminary was a objective type you have to share it whereas mains is writing there are around seven papers plus two language papers that you leave it that is just qualifying seven papers <coughs> which is called as general studies general studies you know history geography economy environment in addition yes you should also choose one optional subject that can be your degree subject or any other subject see my degree subject was engineering but engineering as i already told you i was not confident in mechanical engineering i took public administration like that you can choose any subject sociology history geography and many of you physics yes you can choose physics if you are confident if you are not confident go for easy subjects like history geography uh, public administration anthropology sociology psychology these are all easy subjects just four five months are enough in addition one essay paper is there so four general studies paper four means history geography economy all these things put together four one essay paper one optional subject now you you should now how to clear the mains exam now I, as i already told you you should be different from others so you go and talk to people who are writing many years but not able to clear the mains exam you should not follow them because that is why they have not able to clear but you ask them how to clear mains exam then say oh mains is very tough boss mains is difficult 
your english should be very good to clear the mains examination you should use a lot of quotations you should use big introduction conclusion in your answers lot of um your the main thing is your english should be extraordinary you should give historical perspective social perspective world perspective in every answer now if that is true they would have cleared the exam so these are all not required my dear friends they are not recruiting you for a jnu professor english professor post even you can write this exam in bangla if you are not confident in english any language hindi bangla uh, tamil telugu any indian language you can write the mains exam then what they check in mains exam see mains exam why they have a mains exam because when we work in work in ia as an ias or ips ir any service see if you get into ips do you think every day you will be run with the gun like ajay dev ajay devgan what is that movie one famous ips movie was there i forgot singham i think don't think every day will be like a singham running with guns this movie in reality you will be taking decisions that decision will be with on files you would have come to my office in jargram when i was working or jargram or medinipur everywhere there will be lot of files every day 100 150 files we have to clear once we go back to office to bangla office okay amar you know that jargram office theke ukane bangla office kache kache ache so you see there also there will be files waiting for me do you and each file it will be 150 pages to 200 pages is it practically possible to read 200 pages and all files 150 files a day and clear it but how then we are clearing because we are taught in masuri we are taught where to find a mistake you cannot read 150 pages you should know where to find a mistake okay and how to write it precisely are you understanding precisely you should not beat around the bush say you should write reports precisely that is why they are having a mains exam whether you are writing precisely precisely means like a simple manner let us assume there is some religious riot and you are a district collector in west bengal okay in say medinipur or caste riot i know i know caste riot or doesn't happen in bengal but just let us take it caste riot somewhere no ama der mukhya mandri didi apna der ke bolchen ekta report pato send a report you are the district collector now so now you want to impress the chief minister so you are a district collector okay whether you will write sir this caste problem is not sir name madam madam caste problem is didn't start now it has started in vedic age itself during ancient india rigveda time caste problem started after that so many people fought for it lord ripon fought for it ishwar chandra vidyasagar fought for it raja ram mohan roy fought for it but it didn't stop then our um um dr ambedkar fought for it gandhi ji for fought for it now these are all historical perspective you want to impress then let's give global perspective and recently it is not only in india in usa it is called the racial thing black white so there it is continuing if, if you send such a report what chief minister will think of you will will, he, will she be impressed by your report what she will say a hey, ki pagol Yes or no? Who is this useless fellow? Who gave them IAS? Yes or no? Won't she think? Then how the report should have been? How you should have written a report? When the riot started, how many got affected? How many hospitalized? How much police force is there? Any peacekeeping meeting you have done? Very simple. Five point or six point. This is how when you are writing. This is what is checked in your mains exam. Whether you are able to write precisely. so don't go for this lengthy introduction conclusion no you should be precise direct to the point answer to the question mains exam is very very simple now how much marks you have to get uh, clear the mains exam again 48% was 48% is nothing out of 148 or 49 so total 1750 marks in that 49% if you get you are very good you will get an interview call the last stage the third stage the interview now you have to meet the lion in its den because prelims and mains you can write it in calcutta prelims i think you can write in medinipur <laughs> mains you can write medinipur or karakpur mains you can write it in calcutta but interview 
first time they'll call you to delhi you will go to upsc okay so there five of them will be seated and each one will be interviewed for half an hour now like mains exam you have to apply for the month second mantra first mantra hard work no second thought don't forget those two mantras abdul kalam's mantras second mantra you should be different from others so you go and talk to people who are repeatedly clearing mains but not able to get the interview clear the interview you ask them uh, dada uh, didi uh, why eto uh, how to clear okay then what they will say if you want to get interview good marks <clears throat> you should have english apna english your english should be very good you should be confident okay and uh, your current affairs knowledge should be extremely good now if that is true then they should have got into ias or ips why they are repeatedly going and getting less marks then that is not true okay that is not true english is not true is not required you can answer in bangla when i was in say jargram okay when i was visiting the villages i used to visit belpahadi jamboni okay and nayagram binpur okay or uh, inside our jargram town also many places whenever i visited was i talking to you in english at that time okay whether villages hi villager how are you how is life if i talk like this whether villages will attend understand so i should have talked in bangla so that bangla where i learned i learned it in masuri during ias training there i could read write everything they taught me so they don't worry about your english you can answer the entire interview in bangla also so don't have that fear okay then interview questions whether it will be tough because many a times in facebook uh, whatsapp i get lot of civil ias question big big puzzles now i used to see that take my word amishotti bolchi a question who i cannot answer sub sub just uh, it all uh, a myth that is all not true those puzzles i don't know then what they ask in interview they just ask about you they ask whether you are a patriotic person whether you are a honest person whether you are above religion whether you are hindu first or indian first whether you are christian first or indian first whether you are a muslim first or indian first whether you are a bengali first or indian first whether you are patriotic indian whether you will work for scheduled tribes now if they ask you what you will say in the interview whether you are patriotic what will be your answer immediately you will get up janaga you will start singing janagana mana you will start singing vande madram to impress and get good marks if they ask you whether you will work for scheduled tribes what you will say sir my entire life i will dedicate like mother teresa for only scheduled tribes won't you say if they ask you whether you are indian first hindu first or indian first christian first or indian first what you will say sir i worship jesus also i worship uh, uh, lord krishna also ram also allah also won't you say to get good marks so that is also they won't ask directly because not only you everyone will answer like that but they check that only so how they check just casual conversation just they ask what is your jargram famous for if they ask you can say jargram a jungle mahal kumbalo yes everyone know nice forest but that is not the answer they expect if you you should say you should talk about some freedom fighters of jargram you should say this is the place our subhash chandra bose before he left for the great escape kolkata theke uni escape korechen korechen oi samay otar age he addressed in jargram if you say sir our subhash chandra bose addressed in jargram only that is the place then won't they think that you are a patriotic indian when you say the freedom fighters won't they think that is how they check if they ask why bengali is like rasagulla eto eto mishti why immediately you go say mishti sub e balo we do it so nicely now, that is not the answer they expect then what you should say sir rasagulla is good i like it because in rasagulla unites bengalis whether we are hindu muslim christian see all of us stand in front of that rasagulla shop it brings equality now how it sounds does it sound better 
If you are a Hindu, talk about a mosque in Jargram. If you are a Muslim, talk about one famous Hindu temple. Jamboni me ekta one good temple is there. So you can talk about the, if you are a Muslim, but if you are a Hindu, you should not talk about temple. Are you understanding? They should understand you are above religion. They should understand you are Indian first. They should when they won't ask you, will you work for tribes? Because all will say yes, we will work for tribes. No, they'll ask who are the tribes in your state. Then you will say, sir, Loda. Okay, what they eat? What is the staple food? What is their livelihood? Where they work? Then you, will you be able to say whether it's a patriarchal society, matriarchal society? Now, if you do not know that, then how you will be working your entire life like Mother Teresa? So first, you should know the people around you, people who are suffering. You should talk for communal harmony, Hindu, Muslim, see Christian unity. That is what they check in the interview. They won't ask you directly. They always ask indirectly. If you do like that. Easily, you can get the highest mark in interview. Last three years, continuously, all India first interview marks are from officers' A category. Now, when I went for interview, also, see, my interview marks were very, very high. I went for two interviews. First time IRTS, second time I got IAS. Both time interview, my marks were very high. Now, what they ask? Simple questions. So they ask, "What is your Sri Perumudur famous for? Do you know Sri Perumudur? Sri Perumudur is known for." Our ex Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi's assassination, that place. So they wanted to see how I answer. Ami ki baave reply korchi. So they wanted to check that. So what they they if I had answered, uh, Sri Perumudur is the place where Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated by LTT. Sri Perumudur is the place where our Prime Minister was assass ex Prime Minister was assassinated by the terrorist LTT. Both are different. If I talk by LTT, then they'll think, okay, this fellow has a Tamil feeling. But if I tell by a terrorist LTT, our ex Prime Minister, then they'll feel he's an Indian feeling. So when they asked me, I told, sir, this is the place where Lord Ramanujam was born. He was a great Vaishnavite saint. In fact, Sri Purumdur is known for Lord Ramanujam. He was a great Vaishnavite saint. He did lot of reforms for the people. His body is still preserved in our temple in Sri Rangam. His body is still preserved in Sri Rangam. Now I am a Christian, but I was telling in our temple in Sri Rangam, he is our Ramanujam. Then do you can you understand what will be the my my marks? So that is why I could get the highest mark. So friends, now I have told you there are three stages: prelims, mains, interview. Each stage, if you understand, this is a very very easy examination, but you have to work hard. See this exam, you can comfortably clear, provided you work hard. See how the ranks are given. Your mains and interview mark are combined. Mains is for thousand seven hundred and fifty. Out of thousand seven hundred and fifty, if you get thousand marks, and interview out of two hundred and seventy-five, if you get two hundred marks, then total is thousand two hundred marks. Let us assume fifty-eight people are higher than thousand two hundred. Then you are all India fifty-ninth rank. If nine people are above thousand two hundred, then all India tenth rank. This is how services are allotted. After that, based on your rank, if you are in top hundred ranks, you will get IAS. After that, foreign service, then police service, then revenue service. However, if you like, no, 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 I want to be foreign service first or police service first. Yes, you can put it as a first choice. Then they will give you. Even if you are top ten ranks, but if your first choice is IPS. Yes, definitely they'll give you. So this exam, if people like me could clear, you can also clear. This is a one where you have to work hard. Okay. So I think I have clarified what is this preliminary exam, main exam, and interview about the civil service. Now I hope. Now I think I have the time is yes. I am on time. Yes, it's good. So now you can ask me questions. If you have any doubt, uh, you can ask me. You can ask me in Bangla, but however, I am in English. The reply will be. But if you are in Bangla, you can ask me. Okay, Mr. Israel, thank you so much for your talk, and I am very happy that you provide two examples, and that are very important. I believe who are preparing for the IAS exam. 
and it will be a good lesson for them and how they will study and how will how they will think how to prepare for the exam particularly for the main exam so now uh, we have many question actually we received during the registration process uh, we cannot uh, take all the questions but we will take few question only but before that uh, we have few student with us right now in zoom so they want to ask you directly the question so, yeah, I have a lot of students from Jargram. I forgot to yes. a lot of in school children yeah. also are in touch with me uh, since those days. So I have an influence yeah. in Jargram. Many are getting motivated still, by me. Still, you have a much influence in Jargram. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Don't many, know, uh, many people want to see you physically. I hope in some other day in future, we can able to arrange some program like that. And we nishay, must invite you. Ami Jargram, Ashbo, Ami wo shop shop in Miskori. Okay, I... Just like that, I'm not telling. Every day, I think about Jargram. That was my first posting. And till today, Jargram, Shob Shamai, I'm a Miss Kori. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. It uh, is much appreciated about your feeling. So now I In want fact, to... A few days yes. before, I think some people from Jargram were struck in Chennai during yeah, lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know the... So we news the came news. immediately... I yes. supported them just because they are from Jargram. Okay, Amader <laughs> Jargram er Lok. Okay, so yeah, we know we, we all know your your feeling about Jargram. And thank you so much again on behalf of Jargram. Whole Jargram, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, well, first I want to unmute uh, Sayoni Maiti. Sayoni, are you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I already unmuted you. You can now ask uh, your question directly to Mr. Israel. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, yeah, you can on. ask your doubts, Sayoni. Good, good afternoon, sir. My name is Shantani. Ah. Oh, Shantani, yes. Shantani, okay, yes. Thank Ab you very much for taking your doubt key. Sir. Yes, sir. Sir, my question is how to prepare for this paper GS4 that is ethics, integrity and aptitude. Ethics Manayu paper is the ah, chika, 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 chika. ethics paper is the easiest paper. You should not buy heart from anything. You should use your own examples. School example, college example. Okay. You should what they check whether you you should whether you have a communal that we don't have any communal hatredness. You are a person who likes all religion, honesty, integrity, compassion towards weaker section. Now, these are all you should repeatedly write with your own. Your, you should not say I did that. Never do that. In school, my school teacher taught me one day. Okay, that displayed honest. That way you have to approach. And therefore, case studies, I have written in Quora. In fact, whatever you are asking, I have written it in detail. You can go to Quora page of Israel Jabasing. There, I would have given some case study how to write a case also. So, ethics is the easiest paper. It is not a tough paper. Uh, very, very easy paper. Oh, okay, sir. I will definitely choose this. Sir, the second question is, if I am not comfortable with my own graduation subject, uh, so can I take any other subject as option? Because this nishai, is the most nishai, nishai. part of the uh, I mean, already, uh, Mr. I, I, Israel, I want to add one question, uh, supplementary question, because this is related to this question. Many other people ask me this question. They are saying that, uh, as you also mentioned in your talk, that uh, some other subject like public administration, history, geography, uh, it's much easier compared to math, physics like subject. So some students asking me who are right now in class 12, they are asking that if that is the case, then should we take uh, arts? Humanities subject during our graduation, then it will be a good advantage for us for the civil service examination. Now, yeah. So, it's a very relevant question. First of all, see, the first part of the question is whether you have to take your own degree subject. Not necessary. If you are not confident, don't take. If you are confident, that is much better. Karon, you have done it, you have studied then that is easy for you. But if you are not confident, then go for easy subjects. Now coming to the second part. Is it easy? Public administration, sociology, psychology is easier than physics. No. For some students who do not have that scientific bend, 
it may be easy for public administration so it is not that upsc is not going to give some extra marks for public administration anthropology and less marks for physics and maths no if you are good in physics and maths you, you can choose physics or you can choose math but if you are not good if you are not confident then you can study for me art subjects were easy public administration was easy for someone else it may be anthropology someone else it may be botany so you can choose any subject you want don't worry okay it is not necessarily degree now coming to the another part then why unnecessarily i have to do engineering why i have to do medicine why not directly one art subject say public administration or sociology my advice is no why see you should always have a backup one uh, you should have you should when you come for civil service preparation your mind should not be without any stress if you if you say you have taken sociology then what you will do are if i don't get ki hove are hoye ja then life is gone will what do you think like that rather if you have done engineering or medicine something at least you will have okay in case if i don't clear i at least i have an engineering or medicine i am not telling engineering medicine alone law any subject but physics mathematics something you have that in mind whether my degree will give a backup plan okay so that without stress you can prepare but whether you do engineering whether you do sociology all are equal so if you are very confident no 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 i am going to clear yes you can choose directly sociology political science international relation like that however my advice always will be have one backup plan so that i am not telling you are going to go to your backup so that you will confidently study civil service without any stress you will feel otherwise shop shamai you will be like are ki hobe ki hobe in case if i don't get so to remove that feeling a backup is always better well thank you uh, santani uh, you may have any other question yes, yes, this is the sir. final question sir, for me last question yes. yes this is the last question sir when we, we are starting preparing this so there we have to write long questions in main exam which is very much different from our state civil service so shall i start practicing from the beginning of my strategy of preparation see yes long answers from the beginning just two line introduction then directly to the points you should not beat around the bush i told you the example na you when your collector reports gives a report they won't beat around the bush to the point when you are 12th standard when you studied did you apply your brain just you automatically whatever read in the book you wrote yes or no did you try to impress the examiner with the extra some introduction conclusion no no directly from book yes same approach you follow don't deviate from the answer then you will not uh, it will be difficult to get marks and out of 100 if you get 48 49 you are going to be a topper so just be precise stay to the answer directly answer theek hai che thank you okay, uh, thank now you. i want to unmute sashata uh, can you please unmute your mic yeah please go hello sir yeah please you can ask a question uh, hello and a very good afternoon sir um, good afternoon. i am shashwat i am shashwat shankar pani and my uh, have two questions that is the first is as a computer science background what should be the focus for the interview like is it the basic clarification of or the uh, clear conception is required or the fact <laughs> with knowledge is okay like in the no, current inter- situation no no interview they don't check your subject knowledge as i told you they check whether you are above religion whether you love other religions okay whether you are okay. above your state apni pratham bengali athwa indian first you are indian then they'll be happy first whether you are uh, indian not hindu or muslim or christian they'll be happy so there the subject knowledge yes they'll ask because directly they cannot ask so computer science okay how the it industry just for few questions but they don't give marks for that what they give mark is or your personality actually it is not called as interview it is called as personality test you go and check the um, yes yes, yes. Uh, you uh, our notification never they use the word interview personality you as a person whether you are above religion 
you love other religions also whether you are indian first whether you are patriotic this is how they check so don't worry about computer science okay and my second question is that is i find myself comfortable uh, reading newspaper rather than uh, static part so is it uh, in the right way like i find like the current situation is going on on the defection on the current situation the border skirmish so and this is the uh, also it will help in my uh, foreign policy as i have uh, going to opted the political science as well as higher as my optional so is it okay that i am going through the dynamic part with da hindu da indian express si raj mohan or i have to focus on the books this is my question no for current affairs especially for the mains yes the dynamic part is very important the newspaper part is very very important because And, the questions uh, are asked in that way only <clears throat> Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, is it required to um, focus on certain books on, uh, especially the uh, foreign relation? Uh, see, for foreign relations and all, you should have the basic, some spectrum one guide is there. International relations. If you want, you can study. But they ask the dynamic part only. Static part. What they'll ask in uh, is constitution, modern India, art and culture, uh, then your. economy some concepts like inflation so okay Re so without static you won't be able to write the dynamic part so other than this ethics totally your original answer whereas this international relation it will be current affairs dynamic part only they ask but you should know the india's punch shield non aligned movement that basic static data you should know the uh, information yes 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you sir. So one, uh, two more student is waiting. I just want to ask them. Tika, uh, sir. Tika, sir. Uh, Sanjay, can you please unmute your mic? Yeah. Good Hello, Sanjay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, Sanjay. Good afternoon. Yeah. Sir, I am in Bangladesh. I am talking. But Bangladesh. Our question is: Chilo, I am in some days. Yeah. I am in two months. Today, I have some people who are not chilling. But financial problem is there. वर्किंग Uh, first time when i was working in college then only i wrote this civil service exam at that time i used to work for the teaching job also will be there then lab job used to be there and my travel time used to be 1 plus 1 2 hours in that i got all india 294 rank again when i got all india 59th rank i was working in a place called lumbing in assam as an irts officer as an irts officer the day starts at 5 5:30 am early morning we have to start the job to get the data on goods train everywhere around 6:30 am the conference call starts telephone conference so that will be one hour then because that is a planning for the entire day goods train movement around 9 o'clock run to office till evening 8 or 9 i have to be in office once i come back at least Uh, once in 15 days there will be a derailment because that is a hill section lumding badarpur section and all so some derailment good strain will happen immediately i have to rush 3 4 days work will be there day and night with this i got all india 59th rank why i am saying this is you if you are desperate you will find time i am not intelligent but i wanted civil service so when i was in working only i cleared so you can also clear nothing wrong in working In fact, it is not only me in Officers Ace Academy. There are a lot of officers in Officers Ace Academy. One is uh, Rangarajan sir. He is our Associate Director. He got All India forty sixth rank in his very first attempt. Okay. Now you know he was also working. He was working in ICC Bank. He got in first attempt forty sixth rank. So we should be desperate. We should find time. How you can find time? Get up at four a.m. till seven seven uh, till seven thirty eight. Four hours are there. then you go to office study hindu newspaper in office if time permits then whatever you studied in the early morning write it in small card which you can revise whenever you find time in the office 
then evening when you return study for one hour then 5 6 hours you are getting go to bed around 9:30 get up at 4 you should be desperate you should find ways if you want ias you will get it so you should want it desperate theek ache yes thank you uh, the last student uh, surjo can you please unmute your mic uh, good afternoon sir good afternoon uh, uh my question is that uh, in the uh, in our state the state ps that is wv cs uh, is a uh, is the objective in nature in the main syllabus or main question and the ias is the descriptive so in the case of wv cs i have to gather more knowledge more knowledge and i have to find the more questions more question and in case uh, in the in this uh, contradiction uh, is it possible to continue this um, for the preparation for both ias and wv cs uh, the wv cs is the Objective in nature and IAS is the descriptive in nature. Nishchay, nishchay. Even I IAS also preliminary is objective type. Okay. I know. Means that. is Haan. descriptive. Okay, Jay. Now Haan. see, I know many WBCS officers who got into IAS. Ah, uh, after getting WBCS, they were working and got into IAS. So it is possible. Nishchay, you can prepare, but. what you think is first if you want okay first let me target wbcs get a job then you do but preparation wise subject wise not much difference here it is more the approach differs okay the approach right approach i told you know how to approach the prelims mains and interview see whatever in one hour possible i could tell okay if you had if i had more time or you had no more time i could have told in more detail also but this is the right approach so first i will suggest you prepare for both in your ias also you have a prelims which is an objective type uh well uh, thank you mr israel uh, i know time is running out but one more question i want to ask you because many people are messaging us they want to know that if they want to join your ias academy then what will be the procedure and can you please tell a, a brief about your is academy uh, like a uh, total cost of the course and uh, the duration of the course this thing many people want to know now yes you can definitely join you many are already there one second i think people whether your people are able to see me yeah yeah we can see you just wait i'll connect to the charger once because i think some problem is happening once okay second. no problem no problem please take your time yeah are you able to hear me yeah yeah we can hear you can you hear me yes we can hear you apnara shunte pachen yes yes we can hear you okay i think you have a problem with with your speaker can you uh, hear you, me now yeah we can hear you you are loud okay. and clear okay okay now see about officers ais academy wanted to me to tell it's a run it is in chennai and bengaluru here one difference from other thing is here most of us who are teaching here we are all officers i was in west bengal uh, then we have uh, mr rangarajan from assam like that around seven officers are here okay we are here full time they all resign okay now here it is run like a school now two way students can come i we get students from jargram also if jargram student comes definitely i'll give lot of concession so don't worry okay and if someone is really poor we will support without fees also if not, but they should be really poor okay if they are really poor even without fees also we can take don't worry at all now uh, the thing is it is two ways you can come one you can get a degree for you have a degree then come to chennai or <coughs> there is a three year program also you can take a college in chennai say loyola college for boys or uh, girls there is stella meris uh, etraj lot of good colleges are there in chennai so three year along with your degree you can keep preparing in officers ais academy or you can complete your degree and come to um, officers ais academy we have hostels also okay we have students from lot of 
I have students from Northeast, Bihar, UP, Bengal, Jharkhand students are here. Lot of every state we have. Now you can get more details in our website. Just go to Officers A Academy website. You'll get all the details. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know we don't have much time today. Even you are busy also in your academy. You uh, you are having also one program, as I know from your post, recent post, Facebook post. Uh, no, no, no. That is going on. See, take whatever doubt I have all time yes. with me for Jargram. Okay, but you see, you yeah. have your own schedule. But yes. for me, that program is going on. Nothing for me. Yeah, actually, we have our next speaker also. Next waiting. program. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. But. I want to uh, request you that maybe in future we may arrange some physical program, and that time maybe we can invite you for that program. And if the time uh, match with your schedule, then I hope you will join there because many people want to see you in Jhargram. And Nishay, finally, Nishay. finally, mm. finally, many people actually requesting us uh, for your message to the people of Jhargram. See, Jhargram is one. Uh, Can I tell in English or I mean Bangla? They will be. Ah, you can mix it or uh, whatever you are okay, comfortable. Okay. See, Jargram is one place that is my first place. Okay. Now, I always think why Jargram because when I was came to West Bengal, uh, and it was a Jargram I chose. Many will not know. They they asked us at that time Buddha Babu government. Okay. So four we we were four of us. so each one was asked which subdivision they have to go they gave some preference i chose jargram i do not know why i chose jargram i was at that time in um north bengal theek ache jalpaiguri te amar as a probationer so after that i chose jargram because only reason i thought naxal affected district so there is some scope for that in fact many told me why you are going to a tribal area naxal affected district moreover you are not a bengali also so you are a outsider then but i thought okay let us go okay but after coming there i always feel see i worked definitely i worked hard okay i worked hard you know but still i feel it was all possible because of the love people of jargram had on me see i love jargram naturally no doubt on that but it was just possible see i was not transferred at all by then government why because people of jargram loved me be, be, definitely that is the reason see i could go in and out i remember once when i i know initially one encroachment drive i did the next encroachment drive in the main road uh, uh, when we were about to launch when we did the miking next day you i remember we didn't remove people themselves removed the whatever problem because they loved me okay so definitely i miss jargram and jargram is all every day i think about jargram jargram is part of me in my mind and definitely i want to come one day and uh, see always bengalis i also like now i mean english macho kabo rasgulla kabo so i will definitely come there and whatever israel jabasing is see the main identity till now see even though i am from tamil nadu see west bengal is my home second home because see ias is a birth new birth i am as ias 2004 batch that is the new birth okay any service ips it's a new birth that is why they give always a term 2004 2001 2020 like that so in the new birth i was born in jargram okay and i was born in west bengal so Bengal is always part of me, and definitely I miss Bengal. I will definitely come to Bengal, and definitely miss. Uh, will come to our Jargram and meet you all people. I'm looking forward. Yes, a time will come. Definitely, I'll come.